bright duty every student matters hi students today we will be learning about nagaland okay and not just about nagaland but we will be very uh, we will be learning very specific topic and that is flora and fauna of nagaland so this flora and fauna of nagaland comes under the nbsc curriculum and this is for grade 7 yeah okay now very quickly it is very important to know what is flora and it is also very important to know what is fauna right so when we talk about flora this is related to plant kingdom when we talk about fauna this is related to animal kingdom right okay so now nagaland is a home to diverse indigenous tribes and it is very rich in flora and fauna so nagaland is a state which is very rich in flora and fauna it is not only rich in culture you know and it is not only a uh, home to diverse indigenous tribes but it is a home to uh, varieties of species of plants and animals so are you interested to learn more well i'm very interested so let's get started all right before that let me show you a very interesting picture look at this picture okay you see this they are hugging each other and telling us that we are fauna right and the other picture uh, talks about flora okay now let me explain this is a zebra lion hippopotamus and giraffe and some birds and they are hugging together and they are telling us okay we are fauna so they belong to animal kingdom yes or no yeah so the term fauna is related to animal kingdom please remember this now when when we try to understand the term flora see this is written in hindi saying ki jis pe mein latka hu wo hai flora which means this is fauna this is monkey so it's animal so he will come under the category of fa uh, fauna but this leaves of this trees you know trees are also plants so this is a flora example yeah so you will never forget now flora relates to plant kingdom fauna relates to animal kingdom so if you at all forget the meaning please try to remember this picture yeah here and here clear everyone okay so now here it is estimated that nagaland alone just imagine i want to emphasize on that sentence nagaland alone has more varieties of plants than any other country in the world interesting fact right and this is some of the plants that you will get to see in nagaland okay so nagaland has more varieties of plants than any other country in the world why so let us find it out now here not only plants but you will also get to see different species in nagaland now here this is hornbill everybody knows that you know and we do celebrate hornbill festival in nagaland which is coming soon that is in the month of december yeah and it is celebrated for about 10 days okay so hornbill then we see mithun this is the state animal of nagaland then procopines you will also see procopines in nagaland and also trichoban a very colorful and beautiful bird and this is the state bird of nagaland all right okay now here let me explain uh, let me explain in a systematic manner first we'll learn about flora then we will learn about the fauna of nagaland clear everyone all right now here nagaland has areas with climatic conditions ranging from the alpine in the higher mountains to moist hot tropical condition in the foothills so as i've already mentioned to you all some areas in nagaland are hilly some areas in nagaland are plain this is the reason why the vegetation that you will see you will get to see tropical vegetation so also natural vegetation clear okay we're very blessed the state of nagaland is very blessed now therefore the region has vegetation as i have already mentioned to you all ranging from the alpine types to most tropical types okay so now here in the tropical vegetation of the foothills what you will get to see is you will get to see rare species of plants and trees you know and are found in the forests of nagaland 
clear and also several trees are not just normal trees some trees are very tall some trees are very huge and some trees are very strong okay so this type of trees you will get to see in the tropical vegetation of the foothills of uh, Nagaland forests okay now here in the hilly and the mountainous regions you will get to see countless species of plants you'll get to see countless species of plants in the hilly and mountainous regions of Nagaland clear everybody okay now plants also you know uh, experiences different season there is a growing season for plants there is also a particular season known as dormant season okay and also a flowering season so also a fruiting season now let me quickly explain to you all what is a dormant season so now here when we talk about dormant season in this particular uh, period of time or during this particular point of time the trees will stop growing and some uh, the leaves of some plants will start changing color okay and some plants will uh, the leaves of some plants will start falling down on the ground but this is for a short period of time this is what is called dormant season for plants okay now you get to see from the picture this is a tree that has stopped growing you don't see any leaves out there yeah and also this is a pot in this particular pot you see a particular plant and you don't see any older leaves you see a you know this new leaf that is coming out okay so this is what is called the dormant season for plants so i repeat again dormant seasons for plants the plants will stop growing okay or and or and uh, you know the trees will stop growing the plants will start changing their colors the leaves of the plants will start changing the color and also the leaves of the plants will start falling down on the ground clear okay now here there is also a flowering season for the plants as well as fruiting season for the plants clear flowering fruiting is easy flowering you see flowers blooming from the plants and then fruiting means you see fruits bearing from the plants easy yeah okay so in Nagaland there are some plants a very interesting point that I would like to put across to you all is as such that most of the plants across the world experience a growing season no doubt first point second they also experience a dormant season as I've already mentioned to you all they also experience a flowering season also a fruiting season but the most interesting fact the turning point why Nagaland is so special in in the flora and fauna is this point okay so in Nagaland there are some plants that will grow continuously you know that will grow continuously without any dormant period you know and some of these two plants are the alder tree okay and also the citrus trees all right so this two particular plants will grow continuously until they reach their maturity all right so please remember what are the two plants that will grow continuously until they reach the maturity in Nagaland then that is alder tree and citrus tree clear okay a l t e r c e t r e w -L, l a s all right okay now these alder trees they have green leaves it's it's purely green you can see that they have green leaves which is really good for vegetation okay and also they have green trunks their trunks are also green okay and this particular plant these two plants they grow very fast and they grow very easily okay so it's it's a blessing it's a blessing to the state of Nagaland to have these two plants in our in our state now you will also get to see abundance of edible wild plants and wild fruits in Nagaland wild plants and wild fruits in Nagaland just look at the picture you know and these wild plants they have a unique flavor they are there they have this organic taste and it's quite rich in texture so even these wild plants and wild animals okay they are becoming really highly valued in the market before when you go to the forest you just have to pluck it you are not paying money for it but in the present scenario the value of these wild plants and wild mm, you know edible wild plants and edible wild fruits are increasing so much now that they have an economic value okay we have to pay a price for it okay why so because this edible wild plants and wild fruits they contribute to health benefits 
There are a lot of health benefits that you will get to see when you consume this particular plants and fruits. Some of those advantages are this plant are antiox uh, antioxidant, antioxidant. Some contains a lot of minerals, vitamins and fibers. This is the reason why it contributes to health benefits and this is the reason why it is gaining an economic value in the market as well. Okay, now there is a particular plant called Jalmugra. This Jalmugra plant is very popular in Aglan. It's a very important plant gifted to us by Mother Nature. Okay, so this Jalmugra is very important. Why so? Because this Jalmugra is used for leprosy treatment. Now, what is leprosy? You see a white patches on, on your skin? That is leprosy. That is a leprosy disease, right? So the oil extracted from the seed, you get to see this. This is the seed of the Jalmugra plant, okay? So the oil extracted from the seed of the plant is used for leprosy treatment. Clear? Okay. Now, there is another very famous plant that you will get to see in Aglan that is ginseng. This is not only popular in Aglan, this is popular across the world. Yes or no? Why is it so popular? Because this particular plant has a multi-cure. It's a term as a multi-cure because it, ha it has a lot of healing properties. Okay, so you will get to see ginseng in Aglan also. Local ginseng. We term it as local ginseng in Aglan. All right. Then, another very important flower, which is also known as, which can also be termed as tree because it's very tall. This flower is very tall. And another uh, recognition of Guinness World Record. First was the, you know, the tallest paddy plant. Okay, another is this. This is the rhododendron. You know, this is the tallest rhododendron tree in the world. And this was discovered at Mount Jafu near Gohima. And this is in Naglan. And then India, <coughs> Naglan, India, and was recorded in the Guinness World Record in the year 1993. Remember, the tallest world, uh, the tallest paddy blunt was uh, discovered in the year 1998. This rhododendron was discovered in the year 1993, you know, and it was recognized in the Kenya's world record, okay? And the rhododendron recorded at the height of 108 feet tall. So this particular uh, flower, or which, an, which can also be termed as tree because it's very tall, is about 108 feet tall. This is the reason why it was recorded in the Guinness World Record. Okay, so this is also found in Naglan. Okay, and this is the state flower of Naglan. So the state flower of Naglan is rhododendron. All right. Now, a very unique orchid, a very unique orchid you will get to see in Naglan. And this you will get to see only in Naglan. Orchids are very famous in Naglan, but this is one of the, you know, uh, family uh, belonging to the family of orchid and this is very famous and popular in Aglan and this is Sympetium uh, Dricanum is the name of this orchid and this was first first discovered in Aglan this was first discovered in Aglan all right okay so we can say that the variety of wildflowers is limitless in Naglan. You'll get to see varieties of wildflowers. I'm just showing you some only which are very popular and which has gained a recognition across the world. I'm just showing you that. However, however, you will get to see varieties of wildlife, you know, wildflowers. Let me be more specific for now. Wildflowers in Naglan. Okay. All right. Now here, you know that. And I also know that animal life is purely dependent on natural vegetation. You know, nature are connected with human. So also nature is connected uh, with animals as well. Okay, so animal life is purely dependent on rich vegetation, both for the herbivores as well as the carnivores. In a sense, those animals who are eating plants, of course, they depend on the uh, natural vegetation. However, again, those plants who are, uh, those animals who are uh, uh, meeting, uh, eating meat, they also depend on the natural vegetation. Okay, so the cycle is as such that the animal life is purely dependent on the rich vegetation. So having said that, having said that, Naglan having a range 
you know, uh, varieties of vegetation or we can say Nagaland with a rich vegetation is also rich in wildlife. So with its wide range of vegetation, Nagaland is home to more than 106 species of mammals, just mammals, just imagine, okay? And uh, out of this 106 species, 34 bat are species. These are bat, which is called as sosoro in Lota, okay? So this is um, uh, a bat. Um, you will get to see varieties of bat species in Nagaland, clear? Okay, and also when I, if I have to tell you what is mammal, or what do you understand by the term mammals, what will be your understanding? What will be your answer? Okay, of course, mammals are relating to those animals who give birth to their young babies, yes or no, and also feed their milk. So those are uh, called as mammals, yeah. Even humans are called as mammals because we give birth, you know, and also uh, feed our young ones with the milk. That's why mammals are those animals, even those animals which give uh, birth and also feed their milk will come under the category of mammals. Okay, so I repeat again with its wide range of vegetation, Naglen is a home to 106 mammals and out of this 106, 34 are bat species. You'll get to see varieties of bat species in Naglen. Okay, now here, there is this wildlife sanctuary uh, which is located in Baron, and it is also known as Indanki Wildlife Sanct uh, Sanctuary, which is in Baron. Okay, and in this particular wildlife sanctuary, you'll get to see varieties of animals. Okay, here. So this is Mithun, the state animal of Naglan. You get to see varieties of monkeys. Okay, okay. Then this is a slot bear than uh, elephant, which is very common to all of us. You get to see all these animals in this particular wildlife sanctuary, okay? Also, you get to see this flying squirrel. This is a wild, wild boar, okay, at the broker pines. This is a wild talk, wild talk, okay? And then the barking deer, okay? And also fox. You get to see all these animal species in the Indangi wildlife sanctuary everyone okay and also this particular species hulok okay hulok is the only app species in india and this app species is found in nagaland okay this hulok species is found in nagaland the only app species in india and this is found in nagaland and you will get to see this hulok in this in donkey uh, wildlife sanctuary barrent so if you really want to uh, have a look how this holog looks like in reality, go visit this Indangi Wildlife Sanctuary, which is in Barrett. Okay, all right. Now here, there is a particular lake called the Shiloi Lake. There is a particular lake called the Shiloi Lake, which is located in the Pak District. Okay, this is located in the Pak, Pak District. And this Shiloi Lake, you uh, is it, it, at the foot of Mount Saramati, and because of this lake, uh, it attracts migratory birds from Siberia. Okay, so this particular lake, which is located in Naglan, under the Pak District, attracts a lot of migratory birds, uh, which comes all the way from Siberia. Okay, which comes all the way from Siberia. So, Siberia is also another country. Okay, all right. Now here. Another very interesting fact is as such that Nagaland is popularly known as the falcon capital of the world. Not just of India, but this is of the world. Okay, so Nagaland is popularly known as the falcon capital of the world. So this is how the emerald falcon looks like and they are a migratory bird. Why migratory bird? Because they migrate from one place to another. That's why they are called as migratory bird. Okay, all right. Now here. This emerald falcon, they used to fly in group, you know, they used to migrate in group from one place to another. So this migratory emerald falcon, emerald falcon, you will, they uh, th visit Pangti village. This Pangti village is in Wokha district, okay, every year on its way to South Africa 
from Russia, China, and Mongolia. So sometimes we need to think about it. Okay, those are called migratory birds. I get it. This Amur falcon are called migratory birds. But where does they come from? Okay, so they come from the country of Russia, China, and Mongolia. So when they are, uh, you know, going to South Africa, when these uh, migratory birds are flying on its way to South Africa, they used to visit a particular village in Nagaland, and that is called the Bangdi village, which is in Wuka district. Okay, and this is not just one year. This is not just like uh, they will visit after five years or the, the Amber Falcon will fly again after 10 years, nothing like that. But this happens every year, every year. This is the reason why there is a Nagaland Falcon Conservation, okay, which is already set up in in, in our state all right okay so now here this is another beautiful bird that you will get to see in Naglan as I've already mentioned to you all before also this is the state bird of Naglan Dragoban and this Dragoban you will get to see in Tuku Valley okay so it is believed that Dragobans are uh, you get to see in Drago, uh, Tuku Valley so also in the neighboring areas so also in the neighboring areas so this is how Zugu Valley looks like. It's it's like heaven on earth. Okay, Zugu Valley is like heaven on earth. If you have not yet visited, you should go and visit. All right. So here, this is how Zugu Valley looks like. Very interesting fact is as such that this is the only place in the world where you can find varieties of tropical and subtropical species of plants and animals. Not just plants but also animals, okay? So this is very much located in Nagaland, Tsuko Valley, okay? And also, uh, it's like it's really near from Gohima, the capital of Nagaland. Clear everybody? Okay, so this is how Tsuko Valley looks like. In picture, this is so beautiful, so peaceful, right? In reality, this is more than that. So you should go and visit this place. So, in conclusion, before concluding, before concluding, I would just like to take you all throughout these slides again, okay, just for, just to enhance your knowledge. Very quickly, I'll take you through the slides again. So here, first we learned about flora, which is related to plant kingdom. So you'll get to see varieties of species in plant, uh, variety of plant species in Naglan, okay, and then the important Terms that you need to remember is the uh, Jalmukra plant, also the, you know, uh, the altar tree, the citrus tree, and also the ginseng and the uh, tallest rhododendron, and then this particular unique orchid, you know, and also uh, the animals species that you get to see in Naglan. Please remember that there are about 106 species of mammals in Aglan as per the latest survey. Okay, and then you will also get to see 34 varieties of bat species in Naglan. Okay, and then you will also get to see the only app species in India, that is the Hulok app species in Naglan. All right, and then remember ki, the Shiloi leg is in Pak district, and this particular leg, okay, it, uh, they, uh, it attracts migratory birds, uh, which are coming from the country of Siberia, okay, and then this Emir Falcon, Naglan is popularly known as the capital of Emir Falcon in the world. The reason that this is because this migratory Emir Falcons, they visit the Bangdi village in Vokha district every year when it's going uh, on its way to South Africa from Russia, China, and Mongolia. All right. Then also this Dragoban, a very beautiful bird, which is found in Tsugu Valley and its neighboring areas. And then this place that is Tsugu Valley is the only place in the world where you can find varieties of tropical and subtropical species of plants and animals. All right. So with this, we have come to the conclusion and it is clear to us by now that yes, Nagaland is blessed with varieties of plants, animals and birds. Okay. And this flora and fauna makes our land rich, fresh and beautiful. So it is the responsibility. It is therefore our responsibility to conserve, preserve and protect the beauty of wildlife. Yes or no? Okay, so no more hunting of wild animals, you know, 
No more hunting of wild animals. We should preserve and conserve the wildlife. Clear everybody. So with this, we have come to the end of today's class. Uh, I hope that you all had um, a wonderful learning session with me. Yeah. So I wish you all a very happy learning. Okay. But before that, uh, I just wanted to tell you all, okay, when you are doing the homework, because you're already in class seven, you're already in grade seven. So you should be able to do the fill in the blanks. So also the match the following. So also the questioning, uh, the exercise questions, because it is already there in the slice of the explanation so when you are making notes of that please go back to the slides take down the important points and complete the exercise notes clear everyone all right so with this i i conclude my class for the day and i wish to see you all next time so bye bye everyone and take care thank you all so much